Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Tesla have announced that the Q1 financial results will be released on the 26th of April 2021, Monday after trading hours. These are the financial results for the quarter with their record deliveries. So let's see if they can also achieve record profits for the quarter too. In one of my recent videos, I tried to estimate whether Tesla could deliver 1 million vehicles for the year. In that video, I managed to calculate a good idea of what models were sold this latest quarter from each factory. We'll use the same breakdown for this model. Now that we have the quantity of each model sold from each factory, then we can calculate what we might guess as the average sale price. I wanted to calculate the average sale price of each model for each factory. I've created a table to resemble as close as I could what percentage of each variant of model might be sold. Remember, we had Tesla discontinue online ordering for the standard range Model Y. We also need to use the old prices of Model S and X before the refresh came out. Usually, Q1 doesn't perform as well as Q4. Also, February is obviously a shorter month and Chinese New Year could have slowed down the production a little bit in Shanghai too. But the main issue this quarter is Model S and X production lines were down and these are the most expensive selling models. This was somewhat balanced out by the ramping up of the Model Y in China which as a result meant there were 5,000 more vehicles delivered in Q1 than Q4. I've created a table to work out our estimate. In the first column, I've displayed all the deliveries of each model from each factory that I've previously calculated. The only models that are estimates are the difference between the Model 3 and Model Y deliveries in Fremont. I based it on around the level of Model 3s Fremont were doing when they introduced the Model Y line. I feel like this should be fairly close enough estimate for our numbers. When we add our average prices for each model, we can simply multiply the prices by the quantity to give us our estimated revenue for every model, which comes in at a total auto revenue of around $8.7 billion so far. I also create another table estimating how much revenue Tesla are taking from FSD these days and the percentage of customers that are purchasing it. On the earnings report from Q4, we heard that the Chinese market were not adopting FSD to the same level as the rest of the world. So we're going to adjust for that but bear in mind, not all made in China Teslas are for the Chinese market. Obviously some go to Europe and other places too. But the majority do go to China, so we will keep the FSD adoption rate quite a bit lower. We can then add that into our table to calculate all the FSD income. That comes to an additional $147 million. I've also estimated another $400 million income in regulatory credits. This is a bit of a guess, but for the last four quarters, it's ranged between 354 and 428 and I've basically used the same figures as Q4. With that, we've reached a grand total of $9.2 billion. Comparing this to Q4 at $9.314 billion, it's actually slightly lower, despite delivering more vehicles. This is understandable due to the Model S and X sales having an average selling price of not far off twice the price of the other models. Now, I just want to verify this figure with another method we can use to get a rough idea of estimating revenue. Like I say, it's always good to create feedback loops. So I've run another model on estimating automotive income based on last year's sales. Again, using the same average prices, we can compare all the sales for each model with the last quarter. We can look at the difference in sales for each model from each factory, then subtract and add the differences in our revenue. The auto revenue is $268 million less and $13 million less with FSD. If we subtract that from last quarter's revenue without credits, then we get $8.633 billion. And if we add in the credits, we're at $9.03 billion compared to 9.2 billion from our other model. We have a difference of about $165 million or 1.7%. What is causing this difference? Well, Tesla have raised their prices slightly this quarter and Tesla also stopped standard Model Y orders online, which would raise the average selling price. Not to mention the increase in Model Y sales due to the more ramping up at Fremont and the new factory in Shanghai, which is a higher selling item than the Model 3. So it probably does make sense that our previous model we worked out does have slightly higher revenue. I would say then that both models seem to track and therefore I feel that this revenue estimate has got to be very close. So my Tesla auto revenue estimate is $9.2 billion. There were some regions margins were down a bit last quarter due to converting Model S and X Fremont lines, the Gigapress expenditure, upgrading the Model 3s, but also logistics costs due to supply chain instability issues from the pandemic. And in addition to that, Elon had a huge $633 million bonus as stock-based compensation. Therefore, I think this quarter would have made some improvements in margin, what with the likes of the Gigapress saving money, 
In February, Tesla started using LFP batteries for their standard range Model 3 in Fremont. More Model Y production too, which has a higher margin. The one issue is, of course, that we don't have many Model S and X deliveries, which could possibly have the highest profit margin. I am, however, going to go for an automotive profit margin of 28%, giving Tesla gross profit for autos of just under $2.6 billion. Now we need to calculate the energy side of the business. Last quarter, Tesla's energy revenues were particularly higher than the previous quarters, but there really is no consistency here. They also don't give us numbers of solar installations before earnings like they do for the vehicle deliveries. Due to energy storage and solar installed being so high in Q4, it makes it difficult to judge, as energy storage was literally twice the previous quarter. Does this mean Tesla have made some breakthroughs, or simply pushed harder that quarter? Due to the fact that it doesn't have that large an impact on revenue or earnings as autos does, I'm going to keep it all the same as last quarter. Which is energy revenue of $752 million, services and other at $678 million. After costs, we're left with a loss of $178 million. For OPEX, I have increased R&D to $550 million this quarter, up from $522 million last year. Tesla have really been working hard on FSD beta versions last quarter, so I would expect them to be spending a little bit more there. Selling general and admin is also likely higher due to delivering more cars. I think we're possibly at $1.05 billion now, compared to $969 million last quarter. I don't believe we had any restructuring costs this quarter. In addition to that, Elon didn't hit any stock-based compensation for that last quarter either. Although that wouldn't have come under OPEX anyway. I'm guessing the net interest should be similar to last quarter, with the exception that Tesla did spend some of their cash on Bitcoin, which means they'll be generating slightly less interest. So I've increased the net interest from 196 million to 200 million. This means we get an income before tax of $600 million and at a 21% tax rate, we're left with a net income of $474 million. This will also be the gap and non-gap, as Elon did not have his employee-based compensation this quarter. This would also mean that Tesla would have made a net profit, even without any regulatory credits for the first time. The work Tesla are doing on the S and X lines could be a bit of a wild card, and potentially affect the costs a bit. Calculating profits is much harder, but I would hope my automotive revenue should be pretty close. This was a tough quarter to predict though, due to the SNX being down. If we had SNX lines going too, then this would have added another $1.4 billion onto revenue, which would have taken net profits to possibly close to $900 million. And that wouldn't even factor in the new prices, or the new demand, which in reality should be closer to $3 billion extra revenue. And yes, I know Tesla have made significant profit on Bitcoin too, but this would not count as revenue, and not part of the cash flow, but we should see it come under the balance sheet and finally know how much Bitcoin Tesla owns. Well, we all look forward to seeing the results in the next few days, and then we'll find out. So thanks for listening, please hit the thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.